Oh, hey, family. I'm sorry. I can't stop eating the bear burgers. That's right. It seems like week after week after week, we are destroying the market and we're doing well. And so for all you bulls out there, don't be afraid to grill the bear burgers a little extra. Put some cheese on there, a little ketchup, maybe a little mayo. It's up to you. I don't know. Bear burgers are good any way you like them. Now, with that being said, we're going to discuss some of the big movers I have in my portfolio that made me a ton of money this week, and I'm excited about it. And of course, uh, the shout outs, I want to do that. If you haven't done it before I get into that, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below because I do shout out subscribers who leave a comment. Let me know what was your big stock last week that made you the most money, and you could say how much in a percentage or money you were up. I love hearing about this. Uh, I'm going to share some of mine as well very, very soon. Now, uh, before we get into everything, make sure you take advantage of the Moomoo Moo link down below. Put $100 in there and you get six free stocks using my link worth up to $15,000. That's right. And anybody eight, uh, 18 or older in the house, have them sign up for their own accounts, put $100 in, $100, and you will get, all get six free stocks apiece. And it could all be worth up to $15,000. One of the best deals out there. Take advantage of that. Now, with that being said, I wanted to do the shout outs. And from the last video, I really appreciate it. Uh, Solimane Delalo out of West Africa. I really appreciate it. Out of, out of Mali. Uh, we got viewers all over the world. I want to welcome you to the channel. I really appreciate it. And from New York, Barbara Palacci. Uh, then we have Kyle Fahm. And what do we got here? Mar Mari Nose and C. There you go. A lot of shout outs there. I appreciate it. Let me know what your best stock was. Yes, or I'd say, well, last week. I always like to hear how people were doing. And then we're going to get into the good news. Check this out. Yesterday, this is yesterday. I didn't come out, did a different kind of video with it. And we're going to talk a little bit about this. Look at this finish. And remember how many times all the, the bears out there, remember when the, the S&P 500 was down at 3,600? And I had so many people coming at me saying, hey, you said it's going to get back up to over 4,000. And I said, yeah, I actually expect it to get up there probably between 4,500 to 5,000. I'm thinking 4,800 plus or minus 100. And I still think that could happen. Uh, but at the end of the day, I was pretty sure we're going to be back in the 4,000s. We have hit that. Now we're back up to 4,280, which is way off of those 3,600. It's almost 20% off of that. And you don't hear the squawking of the bears as much because they want to drive the markets down. And that's something I always want people to realize that the big money out there will push everything they can, every button they can to try to put fear, uncertainty, and doubt into retail investors. They make up, we make up a huge segment of the investing population. So their goal is to scare us into selling, depress the prices, and possibly scoop them up at a very, very big discount. And then all of a sudden the articles turn to, hey, this could be it, more money being made, millionaires. And, and then they go through the roof and you're like, oh, I got to jump in, but you're already late because the market's up 20%. And so I always see people out there asking, hey, Mo, is it too late to buy in? Well, you know, this is 20% gain. Let's just take a look at those lows, uh, where we were uh, on the lows. So here are the lows, right? And if we go up from where we are from right there, you're looking at 16.73% for the S&P 500. And the NASDAQ is officially, officially in a bull market again. And that's no joke. And you can see this right here, 22.55%. And I read a lot of the details too. And the newest thing now is uh, for the bears, those who are shorting the market. Now they're using the historical data, which is always kind of neat to watch and everything, is that the average bear pop or the average bull pop during a bear market run is 23%. So we're right around 23% for this, but I would argue they're talking about the S&P 500 and we're not there yet. And so could we see this continue higher? My answer is very quickly going to be yes. I think there's a lot of signs out there, especially with the government piling in another trillion dollars. And uh, I'm going to call it what it is, a stimulus. It's going to make sure the inflation doesn't drop too quick because they're spending a a quarter of a trillion on the chips, another three quarters of a trillion on the newest bill. I don't even like calling it what they call it because um, it's a joke, calling it the Inflation Reduction Act. We already disproved that. But at the end of the day, that's it. So now let's take a look. This is how the leverage portfolio. If you are not following me over at the Patreon, you're going to want to come over and join me. Uh, we're making money. In two weeks, we made $3,000 on this, this alone, and this is only $20,000 investment. 
And so we are now up 15% in two weeks. That's how you do it. And so no complaints there. And we can take a look at the S&P 500 and see how the S&P 500 is up over the last two weeks. So what do we end at the 12th? So we want to go all the way back. Oh, not even that far. Um, 27th, 12th, uh, August 2nd, 1st, right there, I think it is. Yep. And so the market's up 4.62% over the last two weeks of trading. And so we're, we're up about 15%. And so we're crushing the market. And that's what a leveraged uh, products can do. Now, here's the downside. When they drop, you can lose your tail. Let me be the first to say that these should never be used unless you 100% uh, understand how much you can lose, which is all your money. And it's very, it can happen very quickly. So unless you're very up on leveraged products, I definitely do not recommend this to anybody. But I will say this to the trolls out there saying, why are you talking about leveraged products? because I'm an educator, because I like to teach people about all the different options to take advantage of if you feel you have a very good knack for calling the market. This is one of those things. These are not meant for long term just to buy and hold. I believe they can be, I call it the, the, the short to medium term, a couple of months if you feel the market's going to consistently move higher, which I believe, obviously, why I'm putting my money in. And, and then you can get out of them very quickly. You can even set trailing stop losses. At this point, I could lock it in and say, I'm willing to lose 5% and that lock in of the gains and I'm willing to keep it at 10, but I'm going to be a little bit more risky in that. We're going to go, we're going to go $10,000 a, a week for uh, the year to see how we make out. Now, I will be moving it around. I'm not afraid to short things either. So definitely be watching. Uh, anyway, so that's that. Now, for those who are watching the, the VOO weekly, we are now up money. Remember, at the end of the Remember, this is up 1.93. And you might be saying to yourself, what's the big deal? 1.93. Why is he excited about 1.93? Well, here you go. 10.77% down. The overall market for the S&P 500, which we're investing in, is down 10.77%. So if you've been dollar cost averaging with me, we're up money. Everybody else is talking about how this is one of the worst starts in history. We made money. And then we, you know, and that's for that one. Now, the conservative, I went heavy energy and uh, heavy financials. So I took a lot of financials, as you can see here, Goldman Sachs, 10%, 17%, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, 15 and earlier. But now they're starting to come back. You can see 12% Bank of America, 7% Bank of America. I like Bank of America. Goldman Sachs at this point, 17%. So those financials are starting to run. Not only that, you saw me take the triple leverage. Look at this, the aggress is almost up. Don't be surprised, and I told you this before, if we get that market back up close to even for the year by the end of this year, this will be way up. And I still expect it. Look at these gains at the end. They are just starting to roll up. And some of the gains, the losses in the beginning are starting to go away quickly. The worst one, upstart, we're still taking a hit on that. But like I said, that's why we dollar cost average. And of course, we make sure we're diversified. 5% for crypto. Remember, this was down 51%. I call this my Talladega Nights. It's now $1,992. We're going well. You can see the dollar cost averaging paying off and uh, no complaints here. Uh, from uh, We'll see how this makes out as we move forward. I believe we'll see better days. And then, of course, once again, the leverage, 15%, three grand. No complaints. We're doing all right, folks. That's what it's about. We're going to continue to try to do some things out there. And I did want to show you this, TQQ. I know some people said, hey, how did we do? Yesterday was a good day. And then, of course, over the last five days, 6.78% up last week. And this just matches up to the NASDAQ 100. And I have no complaints about that. And then uh, we got FAS, which is the triple leverage financials. You can see 4.82%. That was on Friday. And then we go over the last week. This is why I picked it. People said, why are you picking FAS? I actually thought it would outperform, uh, outperform the market in general. I think the financials are going to do better. And remember, if there's a threat of recession, which I think we're officially in, but I think we might be out of it now because I think Q3 is going to come back as a positive in the GDP. I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, we continue the, the recession. Uh, but right here, 14.82% in the last week. And I think that's going to continue. And then the Dow Jones, uh, I did want to show all the indices from last week, 1.27% up. The S&P 500, 1.73. It's almost like you can pick your level of risk. Uh, NASDAQ 2.09. That's kind of the level of risk. You want high risk, you go with the NASDAQ. And I even had the Russell 2000 in there, 2.09. Uh, so 
the other thing, don't think I'm sleeping on crypto. I'm not. I got a lot of crypto in my portfolio, as you know. And over the last five days, 3% up for Bitcoin. But what is happening very soon? The merge. And the merge is coming. And as we look at the merge, you can see 12% once again dominating. Look at the month on this thing. 78.66%. Don't sleep on Ethereum. Uh, people, I'm going to put this out there. I usually don't. Uh, but you know what? I'll say it anyways. I believe Ethereum is going to hit around, I'm thinking 25, 24, 2500. I think 24 to 2500 from this merge event in the next 90 days. So at this point, you could still see about a 20% gain to 25% gain. In my opinion, it could be more. It could go, it could go wild. I don't know. But that's what I'm thinking is going to happen by that time within the next 90 days starting today i think we hit somewhere in there 24 2500 and that's my thought on that so we'll see if it comes true not sure but we will leave with this little idea but check this out the economy is very weak kathy wood says believes the fed will actually cut rates in 2023 i am with her i am absolutely with her i think things are going to get worse real quick in 2023 that the fed's going to have to cut rates and everybody out there is spreading their fear and certainty and doubt for what they believe, like I, you got to be careful. And I believe a lot of the signs that I've been saying, some of the things she says right here, we're having, we're hearing one layoff after another. And we know uh, that the Challenger Gray and Christmas survey says that layoffs are up 55 to 60%. I've been saying, watch the initial jobs claim, uh, see how high they've been moving higher and higher and higher. And they keep talking about people coming back to the workforce, of course, but they're not discussing some of the other things like the layoffs. It's not a pretty picture, she says. And then, of course, we are in a recession. And I think they're trying to be um, they're trying to be kind of calm here. We believe we're in a recession. Two consecutive quarters of real GDP declines is in the is the beginning of that definition, she tells Bloomberg. In other words, I think she's trying not to be political. But at the end of the day, this isn't about politics, dude. It's the definition of a recession. You can't change the definition to suit your needs. Three consecutive months of declines in leading indicators, which we now have, all right, uh, we have now would suggest the same. So not just the GDP, but also leading indicators. So there's a lot of things out there are not looking as good. Now, people might say to me, hey, well, you know, what's going on? Well, there I hear it said, Wood doesn't believe that most quoted inflation numbers tell the whole story. The CPI and to some measure the PPI, both of those are lagging indicators. The Fed is driving policy off in lagging the past indicators, okay? She explains that gold prices are the real inflation gauge. And guess what? They peaked in 2020 and have been consistently dropping are now at the low end of the recent trading range. So very good points there. And so as you see the Fed getting more and more aggressive, and I'm basically going to sum this up for you, that they're going to go too much. And it's going to drive everything down as so, so supply chains get better, shipping gets better, which is slowly doing. And all of a sudden, prices are going to plummet. And unemployment is continuing higher. And then all of a sudden, they're going to go, oh, and all of a sudden, you're going to see inflation drop dramatically to a point that it's going to get too low. And we could actually get to a point of deflation where prices drop. And they definitely don't want that. And you're going to see all kinds of changes from the Fed. They're going to try to stimulate the economy, get the man moving. And that's where you're going to see the stimulus checks. You heard it, 2023, 2024. I'm saying it now. You're going to see stimulus checks. And uh, you're going to hear that big uh, deflation word coming out. And you're going to think, man, Mo used to call that all the time. Yes, I'm telling you, you're going to see it. But good things before then. Now, I mean, don't worry. Like I said, if you're not subscribed, subscribe. I'm not here changing my tune. I've already set it back at 3,600. We'd get up in the mid 4,000s. We're almost there. We are making money. I told you Ethereum was going to blow up. It's blowing up. I said the merge was going to be a massive event. It's going to crush Bitcoin. It's doing that. We got a lot of things, good things happening. We're making tons of money, tons of money off of this stuff. If you'd like to follow along, my portfolio is now over a million dollars over at the Patreon. Check it out. Hit the link down below. Join us. And then, of course, take advantage of the Moon Moon link. Don't Listen, family, you don't leave money on the table. Uh, if you, I give you an opportunity here to put 100 bucks in. You get the all the U.S. exchanges and you get the Hong Kong exchanges and you get six free stocks worth up to $15,000 altogether. And I do have the Weeble link down there. Take advantage of that. Put $1 in. $1. Anybody in the house can do this. You all can do it using my link. Get up to 12 free stocks. 
and it is big. So take advantage of both of those, then come on over to the Patreon. I appreciate you stopping by. Well, let's get out there and make some money.